Hello, and welcome to our show, Crooked Doctors, at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine of Yeshiva University. My name is Lydia Reedon. This is my co-host, Josh Hello. Walensky. Hello. We should have Jason Berg calling in on our phone soon. And this is the show where we give out important life-saving information to every pre-med and actually this week to every person out there. Um, every week I expose the facts of the crime and corruption at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine and how they involve the Manhattan District Attorney's Office. And this week, how you can protect yourself against dishonest criminal court judge Edward McLaughlin. Well, at 100 Center Street in the criminal court, we got a judge who illegally convicted me. And as recently as last week, well, I don't want to get into that. But um, what I'm going to do is uh, expose the facts that show um, our audience how to protect themselves against this criminal court judge. Okay? Ready? Ready. Okay. So Ready. Jay Jason Berg should be calling in soon. And you asked me um, a really good question. Mm -hmm. I've been broadcasting for about two and a half years yes. at Manhattan Neighborhood Network. And um, what I've been doing is, is exposing the facts that save my life, literally. Mm -hmm. Free press save lives, my, especially mine. Yes. Free press saves lives. Free speech saves lives, especially mine. Now you asked, I want to jump into this really quick. Um, you asked me a really important question. You were honest enough. Last week we, we broadcast a, um, a rerun. Um, because there was uh, demonstrations and all mm -hmm. kinds of terrible things happening and we couldn't get into the studio so we just broadcast a rerun. But um, Josh and I went out for a meal and he, he, you honestly told me, uh, you said, here's, here's what's being said behind your back, Lydia. So I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, yeah, more people can use that <laughs> kind of information. So one of the things that you said was that it was hard to believe that the Albert Einstein College of Medicine had me criminally convicted. Um, what One of the things that you said yes. was yes. that um, I must have done something wrong. Well, in fact, I did nothing wrong. So what I brought for you this week to show is the prosecutor's information. And what happened was, and this is uh, how much of a force my criminal trial was, they accused me of all kinds of horrible things. Um, they wanted me to sign a contract releasing the College of Medicine, uh, no, they wanted me to sign a contract saying that I would never see my records at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine, and they would then they would drop all the criminal charges against mm -hmm. me. Now, this is how Looney Tunes it got. They started out with charging me with over 11,198 counts. Is that the most ridiculous mm -hmm. thing you've ever heard of? Yeah. Then they dropped it down to 133 counts. Wow. I still refused to um to uh, uh to sign a contract they said if you sign a contract and promise never to look at your records at the albert einstein college of medicine then uh we'll drop everything down to a hundred dollar fine like a violation and all this will go away and i said no and then we went to trial on 22 counts now i'm going to show you the prosecutor's information what i was accused of what i was accused of is ridiculous so in order to get to the big picture and just, now remember, I'm suing right now in federal yeah. court. And in federal court right now, what we're seeing, and I'm going to change the camera Well, view. it's important that you have a, first of all, you have to have a mindset to know that you are a victim. This is very important. And second of all, you have to know that the system is fully capable of fraud and distortions. Yes, and there, and not only did they do, did Judge McLaughlin do this to me, but I and I don't want to say anything until I double check with the attorney because you know, you hold me to very high standards. Yeah. Um, and, and they're masters at the tim intimidation too. Yes, they are. So I don't want to say anything until I double check with the attorneys, but there's two other people that Judge McLaughlin did this to that I found so far, and I trust there are the, oh, this should be Jason. Let me grab it. Hello, Jason. Wait, so, uh, so the cover oh. work. 
<laughs> well, well, hold on for a minute. I'm going to turn down your, uh, uh, say hello, Jason. Hi, folks. This is Jason Berg from Jersey City, New Jersey, <laughs> National Living Alliance, uh, New Jersey chair. Yay. Um, Jason, you're, the, uh, you're, you're helping us reform the court system. And one of the things that, um, that uh, last week we broadcast a rerun, Josh and I went out and got something to eat. Um, and Josh told me, uh, very honestly, what no one else would say. And he's like, I'm going to tell you, Lydia, what people are saying behind your back. And behind your back, they're saying that um, you must have done something to warrant being put in Rikers Island for 11 months. That I did nothing, and I'm going to show the prosecutor's well, information. Well, again, all these people are doubting Thomas's. And the, the irony of your case is all the fraud uh, over, over nothing. And then they wonder, then the system wonder why no one trusts them. And when, the, when, this, when everything comes together, uh, we won't have these uh, judges and prosecutors the way they, they think they have power. They'll be, they'll be gutted and be working for we the people under the common law, uh, which, is, uh, which is the law of the land. Not, not the statutes, not the codes, not the ordinances. We follow common law, which in New York, they, they are very much in common law, but they deny the fact because they're incorporated. Okay, so um, Jason, what I need you to do is, you, are you on a hard line? Uh, yes, I'm on a hard line, a wireless hard line. Okay. Am I going to no, you're coming in. It's okay. Next week, we're going we're gonna to try to do is start Skyping Jason in so that his audio is pretty good. But um, uh, just don't talk so close into the mouthpiece and, and just talk a little more slowly and clearly so we can hear oh. everything that you're saying. All right. Okay? I'll, all right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to do a test. Hold on one second. I'm no, you're coming in good now. Just, just don't talk directly into the phone and just a little slower and more clearly and you're fine. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I, the people do complain. I do talk too fast. <laughs> well, you know, that's, that's one of the, you got to be careful because in Jersey City, um, they claim that I talk too fast and that was pressurized speech and that's when they tried to drop kick me into a locked psychiatric ward and I'm like, uh, so you better be careful with that, Jason. And you know who talks, you know who talks faster than me? The per that's my cell phone, I'm not going to answer it. The, the person who talks faster than me is um, my neurologist, Dr. Hausconnect. <laughs> he talks faster than anybody. And in fact, the, w one of the doctors who was uh, leading the clinic, uh, or was hiring, uh, who was running the clinic at Rikers Island, uh, a woman named Lisa Cherloff, she knows Dr. Hausconnect. So we started joking when I was illegally incarcerated that we don't know anybody else who talks as fast as Dr. Hausconnect. So you want to be careful with that, Jason, because they'll use the, the dishonest, crooked doctors associated with the Albert Einstein College of Medicine. That would be um, Vladimir Jelnov. Vladimir Jelnov at Jersey City Medical Center claimed he had the right to hold me and diagnose me because I, I had pressured speech because I talked too fast. So maybe well, you want well, to be I careful mean, with excuse that. Excuse me. Uh, then, then the man who is the fastest speaker in the world should be incarcerated thrown into a pit and forgotten. Yeah, that's, that's how outrageous it gets. So um, Jason and, uh, and uh, there's a group of us all getting together are um, actually uh, doing God's work. We're trying to uh, establish an honest court system and a just court system. So I'm going to show you how outrageous um, the criminal prosecution against me was. So if you're a pre-med out there, and certainly I can have contact with um, uh, deans of uh, pre-med advisors from Columbia and NYU and CCNY uh, right here in, in Manhattan and show them how um, you know, my life was destroyed by these crooked doctors. So let's get right into it. Um, what I'm going to do is... Well, you know, it, it's outrageous how, well, uh, the, the establishment, our civil servants, who we give the authority to by through the Constitution, think that they, they are our masters. And they're, they're civil servants, not servant masters. Um, yeah, you're, you're talking a little bit over the, uh, the audience's head because they, um, they're not following you with the National Liberty Alliance front. Well, let's just make it this way. The, the, the people, we the people, who are known as sovereigns, uh, gave the authority to the elected to work for us, 
to provide us with the best uh, service of, uh, at the time. And what they're doing is they're giving us this service because they are um, because they they think they have well the, the, the yeah these are the civil servants who will destroy your life as they destroyed mine. So um, what I'm going to do is I discussed this a little bit with you before we started the show. So what I'm going to do is th this is the question that I'm answering for Josh. What did you do? Well, I'm going to show you the prosecutor's information, but first I'm going to show the um, some of the facts. Now, um, I'm going to remind you that I have law enforcement that I, uh, I asked to watch this show because I can't get justice in the courts. So let's well, go to the facts. Well, they also say, they also say you had to do something. Now, when you look at the case of the Central Park Five, they did nothing and they were in jail for decades. Uh, yeah. That, that's true. And they did nothing. That's true. So let's look at, um, so there are injustices. People are incarcerated illegally. I'm one of them. And this is what you need to know, because I want to show Judge McLaughlin's face at the end of this so that, um, so that uh, you know, we can protect ourselves from, from the, this dishonest, corrupt system. So let's jump right into the facts. Um, and then I'll give everybody an opportunity to say something. Okay? So let's just look at the facts, all right? So, um, uh, um, and, and, and Sergeant Friday would be very upset with these uh, people who only have, uh, what is it, fiction, no facts. Right. This is complete, the, right. Okay, so these are the facts. I'm going to show you the, the, um, the uh, I'm going to show the prosecutor's information. Um, now, I went to... Uh, I went to trial on 22 counts. If you look at, I'm going to show you how fatally flawed this was, but he, these are the facts. In 2006, and I will show this, and this is already in federal court. In 2006, I was named as a witness in another student's case against my medical school, okay, and against all the complaining witnesses. Now, this is really important because right now at Yeshiva University, these are the lawyers that these students are putting up with, right? So in 2006, and I'll show the details, but first I want to get through the big overview. 2006, John Scarfone is Associate General Counsel of Yeshiva University. Okay, this is Associate General Counsel of a major university. In 2006, I'm named as a witness against him. Outside counsel is from a law firm, Sive, Paget, and Rizal. Dan Rizal is a complaining witness against me, okay? But in 2006, I was named as a witness against Dan Rizal and this law firm, Sive, Paget, and Rizal. I was also named as a witness against Todd Olson, who students will know as the anatomy professor. I was named as a witness against Mike, uh, actually Michael Reichgott was not involved in that case. Michael Reichgott was my, my dean of students. He's expected to know what classes I took and when I took them. Dan Rizal is of the law firm Sive, Paget, and Rizal. And I want you to pay attention to the dirty lawyer trick, right? They changed this one letter to try to make the name different so that, um, so that you know, when you look up the, the, the name, right? This should be Todd Olson. This should be an O, not an E. And this is Dan Rizal. You can see how it's I, E instead of E, I. You know, they play these little games. But in any case, um, I'm being, um, in 2006, I'm named as a witness in federal court, and John Scarfone lies about me. He, he puts in a reply affidavit, and I'm trying to make this as simple and easy to understand, so even if you don't know me, you can get it, right? And he goes into federal court, and he says, in another student's case, he says, um, oh, Lydia Radin, he's trying to discredit me, and he says that, um, in fact, Todd Olson's anatomy class is the only class that Miss Radin passed during her first year of medical school. Now, every single medical school student at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine will know that this is a lie, okay? You don't take class after class after class after class for a whole year, failing class after class, and they just let you, you know, continue. If you fail three classes, they automatically they automatically decelerate you. So on its face, you know that this is a lie. Okay, I've got now, who's my witness also, pool will practically. Also, uh, Lydia, aren't you an honor student from Columbia? And how could you fail anything with that kind of intelligence? Um, you know, it's actually pretty easy to fail uh, classes in medical school because, uh, but thank you. Yes, I, I am an honors okay. graduate of Columbia University. I do have a, an honors degree. 
Um, but the, the educational system is, is really bad, and it's kind of like the fire hose method, where they stick a fire hose in your mouth, you, you absorb what you can. I did fail three classes, one uh, major class and two minor classes, because I was so mismanaged. But I did not fail all my classes. Now, uh, the cl well, medical school is, starts well, in. Just, just the point of information. Sure. If, if they're there to educate you and they mismanage you, the onus of responsibility for your failure is not yours, but theirs because they didn't direct you properly, correct? That's correct. And that's, yes, the school is responsible, and they did, they did force me to have interaction. You know, my problem started in anatomy lab where I refused to be part of a scheme to cheat. And yes, they did mismanage me, and they are uh, responsible. But I want to answer Josh's question. Um, so uh, in, in 2000, he, they, they swear I must be leaving something out. Okay, I'm not. Uh, and I'm going to show you the prosecutor's information. And then I'm going to show you how Judge McLaughlin did to me to two other people. And so we're going to continue this next week. So in 2006, I'm named as a witness against the school. And they lie. And they're trying to discredit me. And they're saying, oh, as a first-year medical school student, now you take about 14 classes, right? School mm -hmm. starts in August. So mm -hmm. August, September, October, November, December. January, February, March, April, May. I'm not failing, you know, class after class after class. That's ridiculous. On its face, it's ridiculous, okay? So some of these facts start to come out. Um, I'll, I'll show you the, the, his affidavit. Some, but I want to get through the big picture. Some of these facts start to come out in 2008 in my landlord-tenant case in Jersey, okay? And the school starts to lie. And these facts are starting to come out. And in 2010, right, you know, 2008, the facts start coming out in New Jersey. Um, had the Manhattan District Attorney's Office done its job in 2008, none of this would have happened, but they didn't. In 2010, I have to go through a malicious prosecution. So I'm at criminal trial. In 2010, my stipulation from one of my professors, from Dr. Blau, says, listen, she passed my class. So in 2010, I get the stipulation in a criminal trial that says they lied about me four years previously. Mm -hmm. OK, you got it? And so in 2010, Dr. Stephen Blau confirms in the stipulation, yes, they lied about you four years ago. And he says very simply, she didn't fail my class. Now, if she failed er all the classes, like Dr. Olson's anatomy class, you know, I, I wouldn't have Dr. Stephen Blau saying that's not true, okay? And I'm going to show you the stipulation, okay? Are you with me so far? Yes. So in 2006, they go into court. They lie. They say, I failed all my classes except for Todd Olson's anatomy class. Four years later, I'm put through the farce of a criminal trial in mm -hmm. 2010, mm -hmm. and the stipulation from Dr. Blau says she did not fail my introduction to clinical medicine class, Okay. So um, I did not, his stipulation from 2010 during the force of my criminal trial, this is uh, in New York, it's malicious prosecution, this stipulation from Dr. Blau confirms that they lied in 2006. Now, well, how I, can I, I be point, criminally convicted? I, well, but the thing is, if they, if they made a false statement, which is perjury and which is, uh, which is a felony, why aren't these suckers going to jail? I mean, every time I hear you talk, these people are, are, are fabricating uh, fiction. And yet, if you or I did that, we'd be in jail for all this uh, perjury. Thank you. If you were, if you or I lied the way these people lied, we'd be in jail. Yeah. You know, but certainly, so now I'm in federal court litigating this. So we got, e e absolutely, this is how broken and crooked the system is. This is how easy it is for someone like you or me, for, for you know, we're in a corrupt system. This is how easy it is for them to lie and put you in jail, okay? Well, I, this is how frightening uh, it is. Well, I just want, uh, that's a side note on what you, you, you were talking about. Back uh, when I was 20 years old, like over 41 years ago, I was uh, assaulted by cops. Told them I, I, I was told that I, uh, I assaulted them, and, uh, and eventually I came, I, the, the charges were dropped. But I was assaulted by these uh, two police officers, 
and and we have two cops, two corporate cops lying. Uh, it, it just makes you really want to uh, wonder uh, why these guys are violating their oaths and bonds of office. Oh yeah, um, you know, but uh, they, they they get away with it. They get away with it. They get away with it, and they become so used to lying and getting away with it that they do it um, with with uh, impunity. Okay, so let me go back to explaining how it's very simple to see that I did nothing wrong and how outrageous this is, okay? So here we are. This is the big picture. In 2006, they lie about me. Some of the truth starts coming out in, in, in Jersey City Landlord Tenant Court as I fight my landlord. And then I'm put through malicious prosecution and abusive process in New York and the stipulation in 2010 during criminal trial shows that in 2010 shows that they lied about me four years earlier, mm -hmm. okay? Now, here's some of the details that you need to know and then I'm gonna get into the, um, the, the uh, prosecutor's information. Now, they said that, you know, I failed all my classes, but Dr. Blau, who's, uh, he he's my small group leader in ICM, that's Introduction to Clinical Medicine, he's reporting my passing grades to Jimmy David. Okay, so Jimmy David knows, he's, he, he, uh, Jimmy David uh, is required to know, right, that I passed this class. Now, a question you should be asking, let me come back to us for just one second. A question you should be asking, and I'm going to just write this in, is, I passed this class in 1994 to mm -hmm. 1995, okay? Mm -hmm. That was my first year of medical school, okay? So Jimmy David and all the people that I'm talking about, right? So, um, now, you would think that the school, I, I'm taking uh, Introduction to Clinical Medicine in 1994 to 1995. Dr. Blau is reporting my passing grades to Jimmy David. Now, at the point where I was going to be a witness against Jimmy David, he was the dean of students. Now, certainly the dean for students in a medical school should know whether a student passed the class or not. So in 1994 to 1995, Dr. Blau is reporting my passing grades to the co-directors, let me just get through this really quick, to the co-directors of ICM. So to Jimmy David, he, to James David, he's reporting my passing grade. So in 2006, when, when I'm named as a witness against Jimmy David, in 2006, when I'm named as a witness against Jimmy David, he knows that this statement is false, okay? He knows. He's required to know. He's dean of students, okay? So in 1994 to 1995, my first year of medical school, I pass Introduction to Clinical Medicine, Dr. Stephen Blau reports my passing grade to Jimmy David, who knows and is required to know as, as Dean of Students in 2006 that this statement is a lie, okay? So now he's complaining when I'm confronting him years later, uh, when I'm confronting him, I'm like, you lied. He knows that he lied, okay? So what they do is they run down to the Manhattan District Attorney's Office and say, she's harassing me, she's harassing me, she's harassing me. With what? The fact that I, that I, uh, that I caught you and that you lied about me and I'm confronting you in those lies? That's not a crime. That's nothing I did wrong. Are you with me, Josh? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So wait, wait, wait. Let me just finish this so that you know, because there's only five complaining witnesses against me. Not only did Dr. Blau report my passing grades to Jimmy David, but he also report in my passing grades to the promotions committee, okay? On the promotions committee is all the other complaining witnesses against me, which is Todd Olson, he's running the anatomy class. So he's required to know, so he knows that all this is a lie, right? He's on my promotions committee, my passing grades are reporting to him. Michael J. Reichgott is my, was my dean of students. Certainly the Dean of Students is required to know whether I pass those classes or not, right? John Scarfone is Associate General Counsel. He's required to know if I pass those classes or not. And Dan Rizel of the law firm Sive, Paget, and Rizel, who's going into court and swearing, is required to know, okay? So these are the complaining witnesses against me, all right? 
They lied about me in 2006. From 2006 to 2010, I'm trying to get my hands on my records and to correct my records, right? So I have a legitimate purpose. Now, all these three guys decided that they would, they would press false criminal charges against me. And I'm going to show the uh, prosecutor's information. Do you follow me so far, Josh? Yes. Okay. So they claim, this is, this is how they took me to criminal trial. They claim that in, from July 1st, 2008, when all of this is coming out in my landlord-tenant case, right? Because in 2008, I'm in landlord-tenant court in Jersey. From this period of time, from July 1st, 2008 to June 14th, 2009, they claim during this about a year that I'm harassing them. And they, and they claim that I'm stalking them. It's crap because they claim that I'm contacting them with no legitimate mm -hmm. purpose. But in fact, I do have a legitimate purpose. So mm -hmm. they lied. Okay? Well, well, so wait, wait, let me, this is important because we're going to do this. I'm going to show you the prosecutor's information. Count one, count two, count three, count four, and count five all repeat. Okay? They're multiplicitous and duplicitous. And they'll all say the same thing. Um, that I had no, I have a legitimate purpose, okay? They lied about me in 2006, and they continued to lie. And this lie that she failed all her classes except for Todd Olson's anatomy class is being used to create a cover story. It's being used to create a cover story that says, oh, yeah, uh, she had to repeat all her classes except for one in her second year to try to cover up for federal student loan fraud. I was not a full-time student in my second year of medical school, okay? So let's look at the prosecutor's information. And this is the prosecutor's information. So Josh, this is what the prosecutor's information says, and this is how fatally flawed it is, all right? Mm. This is how Robert Morgenthal did Yeshiva University's dirty work, okay? So we're gonna look at that. And all, count one, count two, count three all say the same thing. And this is how flawed it is. And anybody out there who even has an iota of, uh, okay, this is what it says, all right? So count one, they're accusing me of stalking in the fourth degree. I'm going to read it. In violation of the penal code, mm -hmm. the defendant in the county of New York during the period of on or about July 1st, 2008, to on or about June 14th, 2009, did intentionally and for no legitimate purpose, okay, that's a key word, but I have a legitimate purpose, okay, for no legitimate purpose, engage in a course of conduct, we don't even know what the course of conduct is, directed at John Scarfone, Todd Olson, Michael Reichgott, Dan Rizel, and James David, and the actor knew or reasonably should have known that such conduct was likely to cause reasonable fear of, ma of material harm to the physical health, safety, or property of such person and a third party with whom the such person is acquainted. Okay? Now, do you have any idea what I did to these people? Uh, all right. I'm probably standing up for your rights and questioning their, uh, their authority of uh, their abuse against the people. Yes, that's a, and this is the first count. And now if we go to the second count, now, now if I really, first of all, if this were really true, they would have to say, there would have to be one name here and they would have to say something like, oh yeah, how did I cause reasonable, first yeah. of all, what is the course of conduct? Do you know? Do, do they tell you what the course of conduct is? Well, they're, they're moving in a direction of harassment, you know, and, uh, and threatening their well-being. How am I doing that? I'm contacting the doctors that, and the lawyers that lied. Mm -hmm. I said, you went into court in 2006. You lied about me, <laughs> okay? I did not fill all my classes. You lied in financial yeah. information, okay? That's right. So now I'm continually directed, and this is what they do. I'm harassed. I'm harassed. They're She's cooking something How up. How can you harass a public official? I mean, uh, really, think about it. Uh, really, what is harassment? Uh, they, uh, did they describe the harassment? Oh, you looked. It's like 
you looked at me wrong, or you uh, you sent the letter to, that to me. I mean, come on, did, did they describe the, how, what kind of harassment that you were doing to these these uh, these these uh, I don't know a word to describe these liars. They are liars. Thank you. They're psychopaths. They're liars. Thank you. Uh, first, and it's propaganda because the person who was stalked was me. And the person who was harassed was me. I spent mm -hmm. two years in that school, and I experienced a, an overtly hostile environment. Okay, well, so uh, I'm the one who was harassed. I'm well, the one who was stalked. Was it? Uh, were you you are the one who's the victim. Stalked? Pardon me. Go ahead. Uh, was it because you were a woman, or was it a Christian, or just the mere fact that they they wanted to uh, to just be uh, SOBs? Uh, uh, probably a combination of all of that, but they were found to discriminate on the basis of religion against those who are not Orthodox Jews. Oh, isn't it a case where there was an Orthodox Jew that was too not Jewish enough for these ascetums? And they, they, they're supposed to be uh, reading the Bible every day and doing all this good stuff to make sure that they are in, in line with their God and they are being so hypocritical. And, and the funny thing is, uh, they, uh, they who are so pious, and I am, I'm a Jew who doesn't practice. I would go in the same ovens that they would go into. Uh, they were, they, they were found to discriminate on the basis of religion in the 1999 Diane Persky case. They said she wasn't Orthodox enough for them. She was a um, an associate dean at Stern's Women's College, and they destroyed her career. She sued them successfully for religious discrimination. Her attorney, Rick Ostrove, did a very good job. But the bottom line is, um, these people lie. Yes, as a matter of fact, I'm learning from you because I had a similar experience. I mean, my first employee, I worked for my first employee doing everything I was doing for 30 years. Mm -hmm. So you know, I was doing a good job, mm -hmm. which was the City University of New York when I was their employee. I did a, when uh, Barnes & Noble took over the university store, I worked with them 12 years. Mm -hmm. And then Barnes & Noble gave up the City University store because they found that City University was a very different, difficult client. Mm -hmm. Now, City College had me there for 30 years, mm -hmm. so I must have been doing a good job. And Barnes & Noble had me there for 12 years. Mm -hmm. I did the exact same job for Follett, and they fired me within six months. Ah. When I was doing what you were doing to defend myself, they were accusing me of harassment. Thank you. And I did not, so what I did was I stopped contacting them. I sort of caved in. I didn't have the, the, the wisdom to keep going like you did. But they could have done the same thing to me, and I'm harassing them. But if I worked for City College, for 30 years, mm -hmm. and for Barnes and Noble 12 years, and Follett, for, and I did the same type of work for Follett for six months, and they fired me, there was no doubt I was the victim. Yes. Because I had 42 years of experience from two companies doing the same thing. Yes, and it's well, part of, and Jason, you know this is part of the culture of corruption in Jersey City. That's part well, of the culture of corruption. Yeah. Well, you, you know, to go with corruption with Jersey City, uh, if you are a public official and you go and you're a, pro a private person and you go into the public forum to speak to Mayor Phillips, they erase your name. Uh, what is so secretive about these people? If he's, he's, he's uh, wait, 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 Jay, wait, wait, wait. You're you're wandering off into right. into I'm the weeds saying, a little bit. You want accountability is key. But again, uh, Josh, well, how are you harassing him? Are you trying to communicate with these morons by well, phone, or, or, or are you just looking at them and 
trying to figure out how stupid they were. Ba basically, what they do is they accuse the accu they accuse you of the conduct that they in fact are guilty. Yes, of. like I kept phoning them up and saying I didn't do this and I didn't do that and I didn't do that, but you did this and you did that. So when I accuse them of actually perpetrating these things. They said I was harassing them. Right. It's it's, it's called uh, it's called accuse the accuser. In my case, I had no choice but to contact school officials because I have outstanding federal student loans. Even today, they're taking uh, money from me illegally. How they much is that a month that they've been robbing you? They 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 rob me every single month. Thank you. So How much? You know, and not only that, they build false records. So this is a propaganda technique. What they, in fact, accuse you of what they are guilty of. Mm. And you know the thing is that they, uh, outside, they, they got different levels of fraud. You have, uh, you have banking fraud. Then you have federal, uh, federal, uh, federal loans fraud, and other frauds, uh, and falsifying documents. I mean, everyone involved in that in your case will receive a minimum of 20 years. Hopefully. Yeah, that's true. And this is how their fraud, I'm going to change the camera view for a minute. This is how the fraud, um, their fraud haunts you through life. So let me, uh, let me just change. And how many years is going on since they, they, they've been doing this? Lydia, uh -huh. over 27 years? The, they have been doing this for, um, I've been persecuted by this university for, um, Many years. Uh, over 20 years. And this is what they do. They falsify your records. They lie to get you into the school. They lie to get you out of the school. They, fa they commit financial fraud. They stalk you like an animal till in Jersey City they almost murdered me. And, and then they continue the persecution. These are incredibly vicious, bloodthirsty people. So uh, what I want to do, hold on just one second. What I want to do is change the camera view to um, let's go down and look at um, let's go down and look at how this stalks you through how this haunts you through life I have another important question sure. to ask you I'm sure there's somebody out in the audience watching this and listening to this Mm -hmm. And uh, I think you should explain it mm -hmm. to them because I have, I know the kind of person you are mm -hmm. and I know the ideals that you live by. But I'm going to ask you this question because I know it's in the minds of people out there. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do to move ahead? Well, that to get out of this morass, well, morass and be able to live the rest of your life more peacefully. That's what's going on right now. I'm the victim of violence. I haven't yeah. done anything. So that's what's going on right now. So wh the answer to your question is right here. The school, as we've seen in, in, in episodes, and, you know, in... in uh, because, you know, there's someone out there right now. I can feel their vibrations. They're saying, no, she's got to move ahead. What she, she's well, got to move Well, but that's what forward. we're doing. So right What's now... What's she going to do? So right now I'm suing Rikers Island, the doctors at Rikers Island. We know that they're a pack of liars, right? Mm -hmm. um, well, we should start down here. The school I'm demonstrating is a pack of liars, right? The school has no credibility. And Dan Rizel, a former chief prosecutor, fed, uh, a prosecutor, a bureau chief for the U.S. Attorney's Office, has no credibility. So we know the school is nothing but a pack of liars. Okay, so that's a, we know that Jersey City Medical Center, which built its false records and committed all kinds of crimes, was built on the false records at the school, and we know that, and remember, I've already been to the FBI with this, right? So the FBI has some explaining to do. And but we know, wait, 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 because I'm answering the question. They already changed Sally May to Fannie Mae to try to pretend there was no federal student loan fraud. I mean, this shows criminal intent. This took, um, this took um, uh, malice of forethought and effort for Jersey City Medical Center, Stacy Dix Kubiowski, to change Sally May to Fannie Mae to try to cover up for federal student loan fraud. 
So and that's just one example. Conspiracy. Pardon me? It's conspiracy. Thank you, Jason. It's conspiracy. So we know so we know Jersey City Medical Center is nothing but a pack of liars. Right now I'm suing uh, Rikers Island. So we've got you can see how the conspiracy is being built and how easy it is to show. So right now I'm suing Rikers Island, and most recently uh, news reports from the New York Times show that what happened to me at Rikers Island, there's a pattern and a practice to lie and falsify records. Nothing is more uh, reliable than the U.S. Attorney's Office here in New York. Pret Barrera came out with a report, I will show this to you, that shows that Rikers Island is nothing but a pack of liars. So there are no statute of limitations issues in my case. Why, Jason? Because of conspiracy, mm -hmm. right? Uh, fraud. Court, uh, mail fraud. You name it, you go down a list. You can, you can do an affidavit on these people and have them arrested. And, and you've been fighting them with their system for over 20 years. And you deserve, I mean, you're the wealthiest woman in, in the country. When this thing comes down, if you use a factor of 10 on how many violations they've done on you, well, you can actually uh, tell the government of the United States that you own them. Good. So you know what? What we will do is um, we'll set up the Center for Protection of Innocent Persons and let them try to do this to somebody else again. Well, and the thing is, is that you won't even need that. That will be when the common law, uh, common law comes into effect. They will no longer have the authority to abuse we, the people. They're sovereigns. They're employers. They, the people who are being taxed, that don't need to be taxed. Exactly. And the legal system is so corrupt that even if you could afford the best lawyers, they would probably be bought off and paid off. And, le and let me tell you what Judge McLaughlin has done this to two other people and when I confirm, but right now there's no statute of limitations issues because it's an ongoing conspiracy. Fraud. Fraud, fraud vitiates all proceedings, so everything they did in the courts, it's just lie after lie perjury. after lie. Well, we don't want to, it, it's perjury, it's a fraud upon the court. Right. When, when you go down perjury, they're going to say, oh, the prosecutor has absolutely... How about even this trespass? Well, yeah, um, but they, they're also going to say, oh, well, because it's perjury, the prosecutor has absolute immunity. Forget about no, that. No, they don't. No, they not only don't they, and that's a lie, but I have obstruction of justice. I can show how during the farce of my criminal trial, they they withheld exculpatory evidence. They never did a, uh, I can make a list right now of all the documents and information they did not provide. I have a question. Sure. With the events that were going on with the, tr with the judges, did you ever have an actual trial of 12 people telling you that you were nuts or you were, uh, you were a, a violent person? Uh, n no, it, they denied me my constitutional right to a jury trial even even when I asked for it over and over again, and I kept, well, I just... Well, again, your civil rights violation, you have the uh, wow. First Amendment to address the grievances, the Fifth Amendment, and then the Seventh Amendment. So, I mean, you, you are, you, it's going to be so much fun to see these, these morons hanging from their thumbs from the gallows. Uh, yeah, uh, and uh, one of the things that, that came out, and I just want to show this really, really quick, as this came out this past week, right, the New York Times on uh, Tuesday, mm -hmm. right? So uh, this came out in New York Times on Tuesday, right, August 5th. And you've got, uh, you know, this is a pattern and a practice, right? When they sentence you to Rikers Island, it's not a jail sentence. It's a death sentence for some of us. Okay, well, so also, Rikers Island is under, under scrutiny of being, uh, being a toxic waste dump. Uh, yeah. That not Yeah, they'll poison you too. But not only that, Pret Barrera, who's the United States attorney, said this is a deep-seated culture of violence. Okay, so when I say, hey, they beat you, yeah. And he, 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 he did this report. Now, he says in this report wow. that even though the report says that the problems were... Um, where I identify, you know, he's, he's releasing this report and there, even though the federal, I'll read this, although the federal investigation fo focused only on the three Rikers jails that house male inmates aged 16 to 18, the report said that the problems were, I, that the problems identified, um, 
were mo identified, may, quote, may exist in equal measure in the uh, complex's seven other jails for adult men and women. So when you've got pre when you've got the U.S. Attorney's Office saying mm. this is a pattern and a practice, wow! Well, they yeah, th that's making my federal lawsuit. Be whoops, yeah. that's making my federal lawsuit. This is a pat when the U.S. Attorney's Office says that this is a pattern and a practice to lie and falsify records, yeah, to use violence against. Yes, but where's the FBI? The FBI sees this. Aren't they the law, are the federal law uh, agents that are supposed to bring uh, justice to the people on the federal level? I mean, they got they they have got more integ integration on their topics that they uh, on the, every federal level that they they need to be uh, taken out and and kicked into a pit. You know, I'm glad you said that. Where's the prosecution? Where's the prosecution? Well, well where, where are the papers for their arrest? Yeah, I well, mean, you, you, you've given them enough evidence to put enough of these people in their coffins, and they're like the zombies that are living dead. Well, we can't do anything to kill them. Excuse me? And this is the, uh, this is the New York Times that came out the very next day. So let's just look at that real quick. I mean, uh, you know, I'm, I'm citing this because the Federal Rules of Evidence, I mean, this is coming out um, in, uh, in Wednesday, August 6th. So this is just this past week right here, right? So we got the New York Times right here, right? That's the New York Times. And here's what they're saying. You know, uh, they're saying that, hey, you know, we're not going to prosecute. Why not? Oh, and they make up all kinds of reasons why. Goodness, they can't make excuses. If you have an actual claim into the court, it's their responsibility to do their job and file the papers. And each one of those individuals that didn't file your papers are in contempt of their own oaths of office. Right. They don't. They don't want to prosecute. Right. And uh, and and here's the other really great thing. Let me come back to to us for just one second. Here's, they don't want to prosecute, right? Well, because the, 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 they say it's the, uh, the Bronx District Attorney, right, uh, that's supposed to prosecute. Mm -hmm. So that would be Robert Johnson. Well, let me tell you about Robert Johnson, because I have audio tape conversations. Yes, I do. I have audio tape conversations with the Bronx District Attorney's yeah. Office, where they're making up excuses to help Yeshiva University commit federal student loan fraud. So uh -huh. let's look at that. Oh, yeah, that's Robert Johnson. When do you hear my audio tape conversations with the, with the Racket Bureau where they're saying they're not going to do anything about uh, the federal student loan fraud? In my case, they lie, they steal money from you, and the Bronx District Attorney's Office won't do anything about it. That's why you wow. have to go into federal. Yes, these people are dangerous. They'll lie to get you in the school. They'll lie to get you out of the school. They will lie to steal money from you. And what does the Bronx District Attorney's Office do? Nothing. So what? that's why they get away with it, because what? they know they can, uh, they can murder you and get and away with it. Is, isn't this, isn't this uh, a, a democratic stronghold that's right. that everyone's doing this to you? And yeah. If, and if it's all Democrats, now I've been a Democrat for 43 years. But you know, I just want to call the Democratic Party Democrooks because they are, they, they bit, were the enslavers back in, the, in 1861 and the Dixocrats were the, were, were the, were the, the bad, bad asses in the South. The, the Democrooks, yeah. Here you go, Here the, here's one Democrook. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> There's one Demi Robert Robert Johnson. Yeah, the 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 the, the right. Bronx the Bronx District Attorney's Office did absolutely. That's why what you got to do is take them into federal court, right? Under federal under denial of equal protection of the law, which is where I am right now, right? So now we're in uh, we're in federal court um, for denial yeah. of equal protection of the law, right? So uh, when did what, that uh, you put your paperwork in? When did you put your paperwork in for that? That, uh, well, it's been going on for a while. I'm, I'm not worried about that right now because what I'm going to do is discredit. You know, uh, uh, you know, I got. Uh, uh, I'm going to discredit uh, the school, but I, I wanted to. Um, well, how, I want to show you just a little bit school. more because this is is, is is deplorable. It's it's de facto. It it's repugnant, and it needs to be uh, put to sleep. 
They need to be put out of business. Right. That's why I say put to sleep. They need to be shut down. Yeah. So, yeah, they're, they're, they're a terrible school. But, again, and they rumor monger. So, uh, you know, uh, what I want to do is just show that, that the counts are, are repetitive. So, and, and I'm going to look at the paperwork a little bit. But, actually, you know something? we got about 10 minutes, 8 minutes left. What I'd yeah. like to show is here's the judge. Now, all of you out there in the viewing audience, you need to be, um, to be on guard against... Uh, this is in, the, in Manhattan. This is criminal court judge Edward McLaughlin. Okay, he now he's sitting um, on my on on my bench trial. I'm like, why am I having a bench trial? I want a jury trial. You're going to take my liberty away from me. I demand a jury trial. It's in yeah. every single paper I wrote. I demand a jury trial. Yeah. Now, when you have a, a a judge, and he's he's sitting there on this case, and and he he's. You know, he's got the stipulation in front of him, right? He's got all the evidence that he needs in front of him, right? When he's got the, uh, when he's got all, all, everything that he needs, I mean, when the school is stipulating to fraud, how could this person have convicted me? I have a legitimate purpose in contacting the school, accessing and correcting my records, and he's got them lying, right? They stipulated let me uh, let me just uh, do this yeah. real quick. They stipulated, right? So well, here we're we're learning a lot from you, uh, Lydia, and uh, and this is what's so precious about Manhattan Neighborhood Network that you can learn so much here. Yeah, we definitely need to uh, to protect free speech because can you imagine? You know where I'd be right now if I if I wasn't able to have free press or free speech. This is where they lied, okay? So well, this you'd is... you'd be six feet under, and they would be very pleased. Why? Because you're a thorn in their fiction. You are the truth. You are the burning light. Mm -hmm. And when you are ignited, they'll, they'll uh, <laughs> disintegrate. Uh, uh, they, this is, this is, uh, excuse me, but the last time I checked uh, for a religious school, isn't bearing false witness against thy neighbor a violation of the Ten Commandments? Yeah, oh, isn't that yeah. really great? And, that's a Ju and that came out of Judaism. And so, here we have a Jewish institution being so uh, so religious to its, to its students. And how many people have been raped and uh, uh, assaulted by these criminals? And they're permitted to be there, yet uh, they, go, they go nuts on, on the little guy. But they, they are organized. Organized religion is the most dangerous thing in our society. They create obedience, and that obedience creates uh, uh, false loyalty. So here, 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 this is from, this is in 2006, and this is from the reply affidavit of John Scarfone. In support of a motion to, uh, in support of a motion for summary judgment, and this is the in 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 Marlene Abramovas. This is how stupid she was. Had she supported me and not stabbed me in the back, she would have won her case. So this is his reply affidavit. So this is uh, John Scarfone, Associate General Counsel, and this is happening uh, in in uh, in 2006. So, and this is her in the, in the district court, the lower uh -huh. district court, and in the second circuit, you can go and look this up. And then, even in my case, because I used this in 2006, it was also in my, uh, in my reply affidavit. So I have this in October 6, 2006, in my reply motion, and this is where my case is. So John Scarfone in, two, in 2006 goes into court and he lies. He, he, he bears false witness against his, na his neighbor. Okay, so that's not kosher. That's not a religious school. They're doing this in 2006. And then I have to, this has to go on to 2010, right? So now this is the stipulation. This is ADA Alex Spiro. If you're out there and you're being prosecuted by ADA Alex Spiro, please call me because I'd be happy to discredit him. Mm -hmm. Okay, he's a liar. And Alex Spiro prosecutes robberies, rapes, and murders. He, he obstructed justice in my case. Okay, so it's not just perjury and prosecutorial misconduct. But I can, I can uh, make a list of information they still have not provided. In fact, I did this on this show. So, mm -hmm. I mean, 
uh, you, uh, the, the, the obstruction of justice and they're convicting me. So Judge McLaughlin had this information in his hands in 2010. And I'm showing this to, you know, the judge and to the prosecutor and everybody involved. They didn't care. Their right. goal was to oh, put also, Lydia... The, the, the obstruction of justice, these people that you had a crime is a oh, felony shit. which is conserved uh, 20 years for each violation. Yeah, these people are outrageous. They will do it to you. And he's giving you a bench trial, and you want a jury right. trial. Right, and you and you violated your uh, your Fifth Amendment right to your uh, to be uh, your due process. Exactly. And so, uh, if you're out there in the viewing audience, I can tell you that um, this is in federal court right now in the Eastern District of New York. Um, and I'm holding their feet to the fire, and the judges don't know what to do. Because I'm saying, please take judicial notice. Take judicial notice of these facts. This is a stipulation. Yeah. It's yeah. irrefutable. And they're twisting in the wind because they want to protect Yeshiva University and the Manhattan District Attorney's Office. Well, you know, tough. It ain't happening. Well, so, if, any, if any judge, if yeah. you submit this to a federal judge, and he doesn't sign off, he goes into bad behavior. He has to be removed from his office and you be vindicated. I mean, Lydia, I, I, when I hear what they've done to you, it just wants me to turn into, yeah. uh, fla uh, uh, into, into Flash Gordon and, and run over him. <laughs> well, let me, I want, I want to put a real name with a real face here. So I want yeah. you to see, I'm going to change the camera yeah. view. They're to perpetuating a criminal enterprise, mm -hmm. a which Rico. is Yeshiva uh, University. Yeah, it, it, it's called it's a Rico, <laughs> and the, the biggest <laughs> Rico is our own government. Yeah, and here's one of the criminals. Let's take a look at him now, okay? How handsome is he? Well, we're going to look at him right now. This oh. is this is right here. This is uh, right here. This is Judge Edward J. McLaughlin. He, that's that's what he looks like. Okay, he's in Manhattan Criminal Court. If if you are, uh, let me let me increase the camera view a little bit. If you um, if you're if you're being prosecuted yeah. at, at 100 Center Street, and um, and you're in criminal court, and you've got him, Judge Edward J. McLaughlin Jr. as your as your criminal court judge. This guy is a psychopath. He's a liar. Yeah. He's so dangerous to our community. We need to we need to form a common law grand jury and yeah. indict him. Well, yeah. again, when when the when he's the court, also familiar with all the cases, well, he the knows people, every case that ever existed. Even though most of these cases are totally irrelevant to why you come into court. Well, you know, it's really interesting. <laughs> if this man did you bad. <laughs> Every judgment that he did that hurts, that uh, incarcerated someone, the people need to be vindicated regardless because, again, a fraud upon the court, going against his oath of office and his bond is a violation of everything that he stands for, and he needs to, the state needs to pay for, your, for his, his abuse against you as a sovereign person a real living person, and no one needed to be abused, neglected, or chastised and treated the way you have been for over 20 years. And you, you're getting your day in court, I think we're but again, these people need to serve time for all their violations mm. on you. Oh. I'm saying that from the, uh, from, uh, the representative of the National Liberty Alliance and a person who's become an administrator for the, the state of Jersey, which is a 120-hour course to make sure that you are following common law. And common law says there could be no, if there's no victim, there's no crime, but once you have found a, a, a victim, you have to make a remedy. And if you can't do the remedy, the person who did the uh, perpetration needs to be put in jail. And this, they will be served notice on this. And it's 25 people are in the common law grand jury, and they are actually the law, not the, ma not the judge who becomes the magistrate. The magistrate is the administrator, to make sure that things run properly and people's rights are being upheld. They are not doing that because it's a good old boy network. The judges are getting paid off, the prosecutors are getting paid off, and the lawyers are paying off. 
They are all into it called the British Bar, uh, Bar Registry, and they are all guilty of crimes against we the people. And once we have our courts back, we will not have the vindictiveness, nor the 2.4 million people that are incarcerated, and half of them are judge drug charges. So when we are get seen here, Lydia, your, your work, hard work, and our hard work, and I just can't wait to see you vindicated and the people permitted to go into their courts and serve the people. Be sovereign servants. Thank you.